Greetings, greetings, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am the woman that needs no introduction. For those of you who need an introduction, just go to royalproclamations.com, royalproclamations.com, and everything and anything that you need to know about me and my ministry can be found there. Um, I'm, I am bringing this message to the body of Christ um, on the behalf of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Captain of our salvation. Um, and it is um, something I believe that is a message that is from his heart, from our Father's heart. And um, yeah, I'm going to dive right into it. The end has come people of God to the era of the prosperity gospel, the word of faith gospel, the new apostolic reformation gospel, you know, um, yeah, this, this gospel of health, wealth, and blessings that um, has been preached to us um, by some of these so-called fathers of faith of this generation. The end has come to that gospel, and so as the end come to the proponents, you know, the preachers of this gospel, um, God has weighed them in the balances and they have been found wanting. They've been found wanting. There are several things that God has against them. And um, I have shared in a previous video, um, some of them, you know, about 12 of them, which I'll link in the description section. So I won't go through all of the things that God has against them in this video. But the main thing, the chief thing, the main thing is that they have transgressed the first commandment which says that we shall have no other gods besides him not only have they transgressed it by raising up themselves as demigods in the church by you know usurping the role of the holy spirit they have also transgressed it by leading god's people into the worship of this of other gods of idolatry and transgress the scene of idolatry which is you know worshiping all this mummy man-made gods of mammon and asheroth and all of that that's one of the main things god has had has against them the second main thing is that um they are fed god's sheep and god's lambs with sugar with lies and they've made promises that God didn't make promises, big promises that God didn't make to them. You know, God told us, Peter, if you love me, you feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. And so they've been feed in fleecing God's sheep instead of feeding them with real good meat of the word of God. Now, for some of you, I feel like this might come as a shock to some of you because you know you might be saying to yourself that bola they have done great works i mean they've done some good works right they, they some of them have built churches they've they they built orphanages they built universities and i mean you know they've done all kinds of crusades and outreaches so many many millions around the world have come into the kingdom you know and 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 yes i will agree with you and i believe that god also agrees with with with, with you if you're thinking that or you're saying that that yes indeed they've done some good works they they've taught us things about the faith that you know um you know we would not have known about you know faith a living breathing livable faith they've taken some spiritual concepts and you know made them actionable so yeah they have they have even doctrinally they have they, they have 
taught us some things about faith and they've done some good things and they've had some good teachers. But you see, um, if you go to scriptures, we would understand that it is possible for you to do great works and still be rejected by Christ. You know, you could do so many great works in his name. You could do so many things in his name he, and you could still be rejected. That's why Paul prayed and said, you know, while he's preached to others, he would not be a castaway in the kingdom. So it is possible to do all those things, like I said, and be cast away, right? And be rejected by Christ. We see an example of Eli, for example. He judged Israel for 40 years. I mean, he did well in that sense, right? But there was just one thing that God had against him. And it was how he he, 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 he held his, son, his sons accountable or did not hold them accountable. That was the problem, one problem, the main problem God had against him. And God judged him and said his end will not be good, right? And that was the end of his era, right? We also know about Saul, the first king of Israel, right? I mean, <laughs> he... He come up for for crying out loud. Some of us would say, you know, he he he, he did ninety percent of what God said he should do. He went to Amalek. He did everything. I mean, come on, God. You know, he only spared the king. He only spared a few rams and goats and things like that. Come on, Father. He did ninety percent of what you asked him to do. We got yet that one thing, that thing that is failure to completely execute what God told him to do was enough for God to take the kingdom from him and said he was done, right? We also know <laughs> from scriptures about Moses. Moses spoke to the rock, right? Or, or smote, the, smote the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And, and God said, for that, you're not getting, you're not going to make it to the promised land. And then come to the new covenant, right? New Testament. We see all the churches in Revelation, right? There were some things that the Lord commended them for, right? He commended them for many things. You did this well, you did this well. But this one thing that I have against you is enough for me to say you're done. I'm done with you. It's enough for me to remove your candlestick and take the light and judge you. And judge you and say, I'm done. So you see, God doesn't judge the way we ju do. God is not like, ah, you know, who's perfect? Nobody is perfect. Don't judge the blood of Jesus. Nobody judges. Unfortunately, God is not sentimental like that, right? Because that one thing shows is an indication to God of the posture of your heart. And so, yeah, that is why God is, is judged them. They're judged He's found them wanting an end has come to their entire dynasty. And the Lord says that their hoary heads will not go to the grave um, in peace. They will go to the grave shamefully, says the Spirit of God. And so the Lord wants us to understand, people of God, that an end has come to that era, that gospel, that format of a structure of church as we know it. He wants us to understand that. He wants us to understand that. He wants us to understand what is going on right now, the state of the kingdom, the state of the body of Christ, so that we can get in alignment with what he's doing. So Ichabod, he's done with them. It's an ending of their era, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. It is finished. It is finished. God asked them to repent, has been asking them to repent for years, years. And because they failed to repent, they failed to repent. God, you know what? Gave them over to a reprobate mind. He gave them to a reprobate mind. They're under a strong delusion. And so now they even believe their hype. They believe they're something when they're nothing in the eyes of God. They believe they're nothing. They believe they're something. They are nothing in the eyes of God. They have no standing before God. And so people of God, 
an era has come, an end has come to that era, that churchianity, that whole world of faith, that whole religious gospel, that materialistic gospel. God is done with it. Finish. It's finished. It's finished. He's done. And so the body of Christ, people of God, is in a major transitional season. We're in a major transition. There's a changing of God's people of God. Hear with your spiritual ears. Don't be moved by what you see. You see, some of you may be so carnally minded and think that because they are still physically you know, around because they're still physically doing, you know, great things. They have still have large platform and following and big churches that are full. You may be deceived into thinking that, you know, this word is not true and that, oh, what am I talking about? But what you don't understand is that it takes a while for the natural realm to catch up with the spiritual realm. When God had judged Israel, um, Eli um, and, and, and Saul, do you know that it took approximately 13 years for that judgment to be manifested? It took approximately 13 years. And when the judgment was issued, you know who knew? The prophet Samuel. The king Saul himself knew and their inner circle. God had, had, was done. He had already moved on. He had already anointed his successor, his own successor. Even though Saul was trying so badly to make, make his son be his successor. Like some of them are. They're already putting their children in place. <laughs> God is the one who sets up kings and removes kings. Who say it? And it cometh to pass when God commanded it not. All of you that are planning your successor, putting your children, calling them from, you know, and in, in, installing your kids, thinking that you're building something that will surpass you. It's a lie. God is done. As for you and your children, bam, done. We saw that with, 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 with Saul. He and his three sons it went on the same day. We saw that with Eli. It was a generational thing. God just cut off their entire bloodline from all the surface of the earth. Praise God. And so people of God, God is done. God has moved on. And so now, what is the Spirit saying to you under the sound of my voice? Because for them, okay, at the time of their repentance has passed. I issued a prophetic, you know, uh, global prophetic call to repentance at the beginning of the year. Like I said, God has been asking them to repent for years and now they frustrated the grace. It's over. There's no more remission for sins at this point. They're done. We're just looking towards the manifestation of the judgment. Now for you as a believer under the sound of my voice, you may be asking, what is the spirit then saying? Like I said, number one, we're in a transitional season. There's a changing of God's. God is, is, is bringing a, a new. That's number one. Number two, this transitional season may be over seven years. It'll be over seven years. It'll be through to 2030. Over thir seven years is my sense. And you see, when, you know, when, 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 when the scripture the Lord gave me was that even after Saul's era was done and he was gone, right? There were still people who were loyal to the house of Saul, right? And Abner, you know, even made one of Saul's son, you know, the, the, the king. And David did not assume the, or the total control or kingship of the whole of Israel it took seven years until like seven years later. So he first became king over Judah and then eventually over, over the whole of Israel. So it took about seven years. And so we're, gonna, we're in a transitional season. And this transitional, this changing of God, like I said, is over seven years. But it's not just in the body of Christ, but it's also in politically. 
We're also seeing it in the world, politically. We're going to see major transitions in terms of leadership, okay? Political power, leadership. And um, the sign that the Lord said we should expect are three kings, three kings on the political stage, on the world stage, will depart. They will depart. They will depart from this earth. As I continue, as I mused on that and prayed into that, I sensed that it would be in the U.S., probably in England, probably England, and even Russia. But I'm still praying, and I don't want to add to the word of God. So he said three kings will depart. Not only that, I've said this one before, and the Nigerian helicopter crash is just one of those. We're going to see this in the as a faith leader. A faith leader is going to go and with his sons, both spiritual and natural sons, on the same day, it will be ghastly, it will be shameful, and they will depart. We're going to see it within the faith community. So we're going to see a departure. And the third sign, the Lord said, is the departure lounge of a major airport. I kept seeing departure, departure, and like an airport and a major blast, a major collapse, uh, you know, major crash in the departure s lounge, the departure uh, section area of a major airport, some kind of major catastrophe and crash, departure, as a sign to this generation that that's an ending. It's an ending. He's done. Departure. Goodbye. Goodbye to them. Goodbye to them. Goodbye to them. And so now, what does that mean for you as a believer? What does that mean for you as a believer? It's a time of decision making. This is a decisive moment for the body of Christ. It's a decisive moment. It's a time for you to decide where your loyalties are going to lie. Like I stated a minute ago, even after Saul's departure, there were still some people loyal to, to the house of Saul. Because for whatever reason, he paid them. It was good for them. So some of you are still loyal to this word of faith. This your papas and spiritual mentors. This NAR, this motivational gospel. Your you're, you're loyal to it. It works for you. You, uh, you. you don't want God. The God's judgment to a generation that don't want God. What you want is a, a genie success in the bottle, a vending machine who will meet your needs, heal you and everything. You're not really after God. Some of you are benefiting from that gospel from the platforms. Some of the, you know, singers and musicians and gospel artists, you need their churches, you need their platforms. Some of you business people, you know, you need their connections and the people who are there to help you sell your products and services. So it pays you. And no matter who is screaming what, whether God is done or not God, done, you are going to choose to continue with them. And God says you will get the same consequences as them. You will. You will not be speared in the judgment of God. Now, there are... So, yeah, it is a decisive moment. It's a Joshua 24 moment. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Are you going to continue to serve the gods of these, your fathers? Or are you going to serve the one and true and living God, Yah, Yahuwah? Are you? It's a time of decision making. And if you are, then you have to come out from amongst them, says God. And be ye separate, says God. And touch not the unclean thing, says God. Stop enabling them. Stop following them. Stop listening to their messages. Stop attending their conferences. Make the decision. Make up your mind. Number two is the time for you to get back 
into relationship with God. Stop all this matharism, this matha spirit, this religious running up and down, running from pillar to pole, getting, you know, go and build your personal relationship with God. You see, one of the things that God is displeased about, you know, about this, this whole word of place, the things he has against them. Like I said, because they fed his church on sugar, we are the, a generation of Christians now are babies. Ouch. Babes. You know, the scripture says that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. And what are the, uh, uh, the milk of the word? The milk of the word are things that Paul said in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4, 14 to the end into chapter 6. Hebrews 6 are the elementary things of the faith. Elementary doctrines which include faith. Faith is a doctrine of, of the kingdom, right? But it's, Paul says they're elementary he says, we have to put away elementary things and move to maturity. And so one of the things God has, like I was saying, is that a generation, because they fed us on, on milk, on, on, on sugar for so long, now the body is malnourished. And a generation of babies who are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, God is displeased. How many fathers, how many parents would like for their children to remain children and babies all the time? And you know how what babies are? They're dependents. They're dependents, they're liability <laughs> in that sense. Because you have to feed them, you have to clothe them, you have to change them. They're consumers. They're constantly consuming. And so that's why we have a generation of people constantly consuming the word. Constantly consuming, feed me, preach me happy, bless me, Father, heal me, deliver me, change my diapers. The Father is displeased with the condition of the church and the body of Christ. We, have, we're, we are not producing, we're not fruitful, we're not bearing fruit. Yet our mandate is to produce, be fruitful and multiply. A mandate is to be the lights of the world. Constantly consuming, tossed to and fro. So we lack discernment. We cannot rightly divide the word of truth. That's why you don't even know whether, oh, this is of God or not of God. You think you know. But the fact that you do not know is the fact that you continue to follow these people. That tells us already you are a babe. You're a babe, constantly crying out for things to be blessed. And so, so the world is in crisis because there, there are no sons. We're still in childish things. We're still tossed to and fro. We're babies. And so what God is saying to you under the sound of my voice, because, oh, you can say, ah, yeah, good word, yes. Those leaders, good, good, good. What about you? God is saying, come. Come and learn from me. Come and learn of me. Put away childish things. Stop jumping up and down social media. Take a pause. Take a break. And get like Mary. And sit at my feet. And come and learn. You have no excuse. You have the spirit of truth in you. You have the word of God in all, all forms and translations. Get to know God. The Spirit is saying that if you don't know him and sit down and get on that pause, you will do it forcibly because the days that are coming, <laughs> the next three months, the next three years, through those seven years, are going to be tumultuous. Shakings everywhere. As God begins to close down and shut down circuses and the activities of this world, and reset this world. So it's better for you to do it now. It's better for you to do it now. Praise God. It's time to get back to the heart of worship. Time to start studying your word. 
having a theologically, doctrinally sound personal relationship with Christ through deeper study of his word. Because the days that are coming would require the church to step up and be the light and be the salt and be that beacon of hope for a world that will be in crisis. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That brings me to the end of the first part of this prophetic state of the kingdom address. I'll be back with the next one because um, the time is now. Some serious times are here. And those who can hear with their spiritual ears would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Playtime is over. God is done. He said, I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. He's done. He's done. Finish. Ichabod. Done. Again, we say dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Goodbye to them. And we say, bring it on, Lord. The spirit and the bride says, come. Again, go to royalproclamations.com to find out more about who I am and what I do. And like I stated, I'll be back with part two of this word, of this message from the Father. Amen. Shalom.